If you have trouble understanding what's going on with Schrodinger's cat, don't worry. The whole situation was intentionally made by Schrodinger to show just how ridiculous it is. In the early 1900s, there was mounting evidence that objects on an atomic scale acted in ways very different than what we were conventionally used to. An electron could have a spin that was described as up, and it could have one described as down. But in some circumstances, the data suggested that the spin of the electron was both up and down at the same time. But when it was measured, it seemed like the electron only had one spin after all. Schrodinger was responsible for developing the equations which describe phenomena like this. This seems crazy, but all the data pointed towards it being true. So even if they did not like it, many scientists accepted it, and they developed an interpretation of what was happening called the Copenhagen Interpretation. The Copenhagen Interpretation states that things like electron spins can exist in a superposition of states, where both are true at the same time, and it only collapses into a definite state when it's observed. In 1935, the Copenhagen Interpretation was the most widespread, but Schrodinger thought there were some issues with it, namely, how big can something get while still being able to be in superposition? Schrodinger came up with a thought experiment. It's usually done with a cat, but we will use a pigeon. You have a box where no information can escape when it's sealed, and inside there's a device which measures the spin of an electron. If the spin is down, it will fire a gun and kill the pigeon. After measuring, the spin of the electron and the life of the pigeon will become entangled, meaning observing one is the same as observing the other. This means that an observer outside the box could describe the pigeon as both alive and dead, since the spin of the electron could be described as both down and up, until we observe it. When the box is opened, the situation collapses into either a dead pigeon or a live pigeon. Schrodinger thought it was ridiculous to consider the pigeon as both alive and dead before we opened the box, and used it to claim that the existing view on quantum mechanics was incomplete. It is an example of situational irony that people often use Schrodinger's cat as a way of showing that the animal is indeed both alive and dead when it is created as a counterpoint. Even what it means to observe something in the Copenhagen interpretation is vague and debated, so it's possible that the spin of the electron collapsed to either down or up when the device that fires the gun measures it, and so the pigeon would be dead long before the box was opened. The consequences of the thought experiment are still being debated today, and there is no consensus as to what is actually happening in the box before it opened, and many different interpretations exist. Many scientists choose not to interpret at all, and just focus on what can be calculated. On a lighter note, here is a related poem. The slit not taken. Two slits diverged in a block of wood, and sorry the electron could not travel both and be one leapt on, long it stood, and traveled down one as far as it could. To where it hit a screen, I could swear by oath. But I swear it took the other, as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it had interacted and caused wear. Though as for those slits there, had gone through really about the same. But by looking closely, I could say, in testing, one slit had charge attacked. Oh, it kept the first for another day. Yet knowing that waves collapse on the way, I doubt it if it could really be tracked. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence, two slits diverged in a block of wood, and it, it took both it could travel by, and that made all the difference. Are you looking for some special meaning behind the poem? Don't take everything so seriously. Can't it just be a funny little parody of a well-known poem by Robert Frost called The Road Not Taken? The funny thing is that Robert Frost also believed that his poem is taken way too seriously, and it is just supposed to be a funny poem about the narrator's indecision and how he regrets taking the road less travel by, and not what most people think it is, which is that it's a poem about free thinking. You can hear the full explanation in part two right here. Thanks for watching.